Hi everyone, how are you? Um, I made a video uh, regarding uh, the Wabi Sabi episode that was going all great until until someone mentioned JLR. And as you heard my very raw reaction in the video that I I did about my feelings about somebody thinking that it's just so cute and endearing when he did this. And, you know, someone if he has no morals and, and, and okay, you know, I'm not going to go there again. Okay. I'm going to try and be very, very professional right now. So what I now have come to understand is that small town girl herself does not have a channel. So... She is with the Summerwells um, community, from what I what I gather, and I really stay away from that community because of the type of people who are involved, and it's sad because the focus of Summer has been lost because of the maggots making money on her name when they have done nothing to help find her or find more information that is helpful, valid, legitimate, and worthy of being evaluated by criminal investigators on Summer's name how many different people are getting their bills paid what has that done for Summer Wells how has that helped Summer Wells why is it okay that JLR for example uses Summer Wells and other children's names to fund his lifestyle. Or as small town girl said, his job. Why is it his job to make money behaving in an immoral manner that she said herself? When JLR went with the people who he is associated with by proof. He can put all of the restraining orders and cease and desist he wants to say that he's not associated with Blowjob Betty and Molly and whoever else. But the fact of the matter is, is that he's associated with them. He's their little ringleader. He's their little Oz. He's the one behind the scenes doing all their, all the, all the, the dirty work. He's the flying monkey. He's the Jerry Springer of YouTube. Why take my word for it, you know? I mean, Betty's out there talking about, you know, she makes all these, you know, she's in there for the children. She's in it for the children, you know, and, and she wants everybody to give that money and give that money and give that money, you know, because for the children. And who taught her some new tricks? JLR. Absolutely JLR. Listen to my last video. It's a little raw. I was not happy to be awoken from my sleep to hear somebody say, well, I love JLR. He's so cool. And then to insult heels in the air and to say, well, why don't you, do you have a channel? Why don't you do what JLR does? Well, why, why don't you put that on your channel? Well, because heels in the air acts with integrity, responsibility, and stays within the terms of service. JLR breaks the terms of service and is getting money by doing so. Make that make sense. Make it make sense that Candace's dad was working hard to earn his money, as was his wife Candace, and Betty and JLR went and got him fired from his job. So that then they can make money on their daughter's name, and somehow that's worth supporting that's for the children? Hmm. I don't know.
Because, you know, it's hard to separate. It, it's it's like separating hairs. It's like once salt and pepper is put on something, it's really hard to pick it apart. And that's the way that Betty and JLR are. They are doing their little tricks, but their tricks only work if people think they are not with each other. That they are not working in tandem. That they are not associates of the other be farther from the truth. Betty has a type. She likes little short men because they're easier to strangle. And the thing is, is that with Betty especially and JLR, they like to do what they like to do and stomp all over everybody and dox everybody, but they want to protect everything about them. They don't want their background shown. They don't want anybody giving out their address. They don't want anybody telling the truth to what they lie about because that poses a threat to their income. Because they're making money all for the children, all for the children, right? Well, when in doubt, check out my channel. I want to show you something. Because JLR wanted to distance himself from Betty because Betty's got a little, Betty's got loose lips and she, she was telling on them a little bit too much. Uh, JLR doesn't blink and he doesn't slip up, Okay. He doesn't accidentally say what he's doing. And she does. She slips up. And she slipped up right here. She did this. I'm from Florida, and uh, I have a true crime podcast. But look here, and that actually supports my adventures here to all these Trump rallies because we've been to a lot of them. I'm from Florida, and uh, I have a true crime podcast. But look here, and that actually supports my adventures here to all these Trump rallies because we've been to a lot of them. I'm from we? Florida, and uh, Who is I have we? a true crime Who is we? Her and the turd in the pocket? That old joke. <laughs> no. Who is she with? Is she, who's, who is she at that rally with? Hmm? Who is she at that rally with? Who does she do her little, I've been assaulted. Help me. Help me. Oh, I've been hurt. I've been injured. Help. And then out of the crowd, a little man who doesn't blink says he witnessed it all. And their little game is just to get the the name and address of the other person so they can intimidate that person into silence because they want what they want heard, nobody else. So JLR taught Betty to refine her skills. So when I have made content, I have to be very careful because she tries very hard to get my channel taken down. She's been successful once. I was able to get my channel back after 72 hours, but anytime I do anything, then she goes through and, and reports every single video I've ever made for profanity and otherwise, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And and that's fine. I'm not doing anything out of the terms of service. You can report me all that you want. I don't care. I will continue to speak about the truth when I see a lie. I I hate liars and I hate people who profit and exploit children especially. That being said, when I made my last video on Betty, I had worked about three hours on it um, because she said that she works with politicians, that all of the politicians know her and she does this and she does that. She, she wants people to believe that her her local politicians appreciate what she's doing and, and, and are behind her. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. And uh, there's the article out there of where she has made terroristic threats towards politicians for them not listening to her because she is ridiculous and she doesn't ever say anything of relevance. She is not asked to be there. She is not invited to be there. It isn't as if she is part of any task forces. That's how it really happens. When you are speaking on a topic that would be beneficial for the House and Senate to hear, for them to make better and stronger laws, you are invited. Your work that you have done earns you that. Spaces are made for you. And oftentimes the, oftentimes the governor or the attorney general themselves drives you there. I'm just... Speaking from experience, but anyway, anyway, who's, who am I? 
Who am I? Who am I? So I, um, I wanted to talk more about how it's actually done and how what she's doing isn't appreciated and how they um, have made law, uh, laws against her. And this one reporter who wrote this beautiful article called Manatee Woman Threatens. I think you can find it like by Googling that and, and Google her name. And, and she's known as Manatee Woman. Manatee woman threatens, blah, 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 blah. And you go into this thing and it's it's pretty cool because the article shows her political work, uh, as she calls it, and, and how she has um, done terrible things. And she's not appreciated in her community. She's not a person who just made a couple of mistakes when she was young and had a couple of arrests. Nothing, nothing like that. So I did what Betty does, what JLR does, and I, I did the article and I showed this article and in within the article, there was Twitter links and within the Twitter links, there were her criminal background. These were all public records. They were, they were easy to be shown that you can, you can show this. So I was showing the whole process where it's there and this is all public record that this isn't me going and paying a service like Ben verified like they do or anything like that, that this is how, how you can find this. And right now her whole criminal record is, is on Ben verified because she's a resident of Florida and Florida has the sunshine law where everything is brought to light to be exposed in the sun. That's why we know so many things about the things that happen in Florida, such as the Casey Anthony case. So, because I knew that she was going to report it, I made sure to put the video through and ask for it to be reviewed. And it came out as suitable for all audiences, totally monetized, and it was up for about 40 minutes before Betty herself got it down because she knew exactly how to get it taken down because her little buddy taught her things and she knows that when that article comes up that it it links to her full criminal background and within that it shows her address i would not have willingly shown somebody's address and, and that would be my mistake in that was showing on all of the documents that are in the in the newspaper article that has the Twitter responses that lists that, that then, you know, so I was just clicking, 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 but on the top of it, it shows her address. So I'm, I'm assuming that other people have tried to do what I did. And so she knew very fast how to get it taken down. Okay. So here is in um, my main thing. So you can see here where I have these notifications and as I go to a lot of concerts, I like to take footage when it's allowed of the performers so that those of you who are sitting at home, um, like I was, I was sick for a very long time. I used to be in the hospital for months at a time. I was very, very ill. And so I would have liked it if I could have seen what other people are doing and seen you know, little pieces of concerts and little, little performances. So I do that. So this is what happens when I do that because then the the bots will hear the song. So even though I've I've made that footage and I've taken that film, when I post it, it's going to come up like this because the song is going to be identified as something that is held by somebody else. So, and these are just fine. They come up. They say you can still... Um, get monetization you can you can still like do that it's it's not a strike on your channel so this is this is just fine that's what happens just run music so i want you guys just to see this for for, for full disclosure so then we're going to go over here we're going to go two, three, four, five, six. these are all just for my music things seven and then we're going to go here and this is here because this here. So did you see what I just did? I mean, I don't know if I can show you how I did that. Let's see here. Because small town girl in the video that I did yesterday, 
was talking about how cool it is that JLR does all this stuff and and he goes and he posts all the addresses and he does all of that and 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 you know and no one else is doing that and heels in the air was patiently listening and basically the conversation was like you know small town girls are like that's so cool that he does that and you know why don't why don't you do that you know and she's she asked heels in the air ask heels in the air heels in the air who has like the coolest freaking channel and is always perfect in her edits and gets the the best clips ever just heels in the air she's just a class act and this chick says well why don't you put it on your channel do you have a, do you have a channel it's like and it's like okay there's reasons why heels in the air would not be putting up the address we all know the addresses we all know all the things about all of the people we all know all of the things but we cannot say the things because there are terms of service and so if we try to do something even even slightly similar to what jlr or blowjob betty does we get in trouble because they make sure that it's put down because they want to keep their grift going their scam only is successful if they keep the truth silenced and they're very good at it. So although I had had this video totally checked, there was no problems whatsoever that YouTube saw. So when I put it up, making sure that there wasn't going to be anything within, within 40 minutes, it was pulled and it came down here. And so, like I said, it says, thank you for your appeal. After further review, we've determined that your content Hashtag Bullhorn Betty, BHB Betty works for government, Twitter, victim, of domestic violence, question mark. Um, was taken down. Okay, so it was taken down, and it had been shot down at uh, seven thirty six a.m. So during her little coffee hour, you might have seen her gotten getting really upset one day. Well, that was because I had put up a beautiful video. I thought it was. I I thought I did a really good job. Apparently, she didn't like it. So I got that. So I appealed saying that, you know, would it be okay if I took my my um, commentary out and only showed, you know, the thing that's, it, it didn't let me. Now, here is what it says. And this is why it's not right that JLR and Betty are breaking the terms of service every single day. Because here's here's why what I, I couldn't put up what I did. So learn more and it's going to, here you go, it takes me to the community guidelines. It's going to show me what I did wrong. So it says here that YouTube has always had a set of community guidelines that outline what kind of content isn't allowed on YouTube. These policies apply to all types of content on our platform, including videos, comments, links, and thumbnails. Our community guidelines are a key part of our broader suite of policies and are regularly updated in consultation with outside experts and YouTube creators to keep pace with emerging challenges. So that's, I think, a lot of people don't know that, that it's even... It, so your videos, your comments, your links, and your thumbnails. And it's going to go down here. And you have a full list of community guidelines. We have to abide by that. JLR and Betty, they, they break the rules all the time. And they don't get in trouble. And I, I don't know why. Um, so... There are all of these rules here. Basically, all it said, and it's not saying it why it didn't come out, but it said it in the in the thing. I, w I was hoping it would show it here. Um, it may be in the email because it said that the address was visible, so you cannot show an address. That's against the terms of service. JLR shows the address all the time. He shows addresses. That's against terms of service. That's why Heels in the Air can't do what JLR does. That's why I can't do what JLR does. I can't do what Betty does. They break the terms of service. YouTube is a, a, is a system that is based on the community reporting others that do not follow the terms of service. And to be fair, okay, I broke a rule. Betty is in this community. She reported me. My video was taken down. YouTube saw it as an honest mistake because of the way that I, I showed that it went from one to the next to the next. You know, I was showing as it was showing how this article 
that I was reviewing had that and I was reading the Twitter, reading that and that. So it wasn't like I had inserted something from a service that I had procured. That would have gotten me a strike towards my channel. So there are rules. So that that's where small town girl needs to know that that's why we don't do what JLR does. And I think that JLR is getting away with this because people think that, oh, he's cute. He's endearing. You know, he's kind of like, like a, like a rabid squirrel or something. And, and, and that's fine. Think of, think of most people in prison. I, when I was earning my bachelor's degree in criminal justice, um, my favorite, my favorite advisor was a former prison superintendent. So he would take us to hit the prison that he used to be the superintendent of and everybody loved him, you know, so he'd go through, you know, and he'd, he'd walk us through and, you know, they'll be like, Hey Bob, how are you? you know, calling from their cells and stuff. And, um, it was really cool to see because Bob was cool as shit and he was really cool to the inmates. And that's, that's pretty much how you want a prison superintendent to be, to keep, to keep the peace, you know? And so that's saying that all of these people who are convicted and they're in, in custody, they get along with the correction officers. They get along with the, the prison superintendent. It, it that's where the argument is, is that, okay, so fine. So people will see that, oh, JLR is, is an endearing type. Not me. Okay. I think he's creepy as fuck. And I hate what he does. His behavior is reprehensible. It's disgusting. And I'm surprised that no one kicks his ass. That being said, maybe Betty will. I don't know. We'll just have to see how their breakup goes. But anyway. She has a type, like I say, for a reason. Um, the behavior that he does creates victims. There are victims of his crimes. Oh, well, he, it's just nonviolent. No, that's not what we're saying. And I am not talented in creating. And so some of the really talented creators have done great work. Let me show you. Uh, search across my channel. That's not what I wanted. Let's go back here. Because if you search for JLR, let's see. The best one, I think, I really like... Well, Heels in the Air, JLR. Heels in the Air does great work. Okay. So hop on over to Heels in the Air. She has a great channel. And I cannot believe that um, Small Town Girl had the gall to say, do you have a channel? Oh, oh to Heels. Heels. I, I, my, the wind was knocked out of me when it was said. I was just like, does she have a channel? Does she have a channel? She's freaking amazing. Heels in the Air has 16.1 subs and well done. Well done. She's awesome. And like I said, it's criticism, a little satire, parody, a little fact checking, and an effing lot of clips. She's great. Okay. So if you don't want to hear what I say about JLR, well, there you go. Check out what Heels in the Air has clipped and it'll show everything in JLR's own words. Okay. And then let's see here. Um, I think that Deets in the Streets, JLR, she is amazing. She has done the most incredible work chronicling. Well, you know what? I believe that JLR is the Jerry Springer of YouTube. But, you know, who am I? Um, I think that she says it best in this one here. And it says, Jonathan Lee Riches, liar, hoaxer, troll. Let's dig into how he became true crime's number one parasite. Bam. 
perfect. She did this beautiful work of art here. You think a natural and deodorant that actually works is a myth? Well, some myths are. Let's get her some ad revenue right there. Um, I don't want to take away anything from her. So please go and watch her video. You know, don't, don't take it for granted that I said it, you know, please go and watch her video so that she gets the revenue because this is literally a work of art. And, um, I'll just kind of show you where some of the main talking points are in case, um, it's a little overwhelming at first. This, this one is, is the best. She, she's done other amazing things, but this one really goes into the history and the clips are just flawless. The research she did was amazing. So, like I say, let's run her some ads there. And it's going to start over here. Otay, Otay. We've talked about Pitlandia. How did you know my name? We're gonna go Native here. has fantastical so we go here. When the less affluent, the technologically unsophisticated, and the simply reluctant masses were just starting to find their bearings online, Jonathan Lee Riches helped develop the identity theft technique known as phishing. He was in his mid-20s living in Florida and collaborating with teenage chat room acquaintances in Texas who used spam emails to trick victims into disclosing personal information. Rich's role was to monetize the data, which he accomplished by seamlessly navigating the online and offline worlds. In contemporary news accounts, investigators described the way Riches would stroll into a bank, flash fake identification, and coolly impersonate his mark, convincing tellers to hand over thousands of dollars in cash. The consequences reverberated widely. By the estimate of the FBI, the group charged more than $1.4 million to accounts opened in the names of about 2,000 people. Rich's own parents, who live in a small town in Pennsylvania, served probation for failing to fully cooperate with investigators. He was sentenced to 125 months in prison for fraud and conspiracy. Rich has kept up a steady legal correspondence on his case. In March of 2006, from a medium security prison in South Carolina, he filed a motion seeking the return of confiscated assets, including 23 new PlayStation video games, a commemorative Super Bowl football, 66 new shirts with tags, I wonder if they all said media, a plunger, a subwoofer, and a box of life vests. The document drew little attention or sympathy, and a judge ordered the items forfeited to the FBI for donation to Goodwill. In hindsight though, his signature on the sworn statement, Jonathan Lee Riches with the copyright symbol at the end, signified the start of an improvisatory publicity campaign. He used the copyright symbol that same month in a nine page conspiracy complaint seeking damages of almost $400 trillion backed by gold or silver. Filing his suit in the- And there you go. You see how good she did it? And did you catch that? Did you catch that in there? That here the little freaking troll was sitting there with with a bunch of other teenage trolls and they were sitting there and and perusing and scamming and scouring the web and they created the technique known as phishing that's where people click the link and they get their bank account stolen online okay and then from there that's where he went on and found from those bank accounts people's identities and then it was his job within that crime ring to find identities and monetize those identities so then when he would go in and fully impersonate the individuals from the identities that he stole he would go and empty their bank accounts huh so small town girl when she's saying how cute it is and everything saying oh he learned that in prison no that's what he went to prison for but wait isn't that exactly what he's doing right now because Right now, it's well known that Molly and Betty pay for their dirty deeds. They pay, allegedly, take me to court, I'll say it in front, we'll see who gets in trouble and gets um, their parole revoked. I'll play. I'll play. Because the thing is, is that right now that's what he's doing with other people's identities. He is being paid by 
these people who raised funds for the children, for the children, raised funds for the children, for the children. So that money that was raised for the children, for the children, to, to go to Trump rallies, to for the children. That money is then given to JLR because then he can go and find other people's identities for them. And then Betty and Molly and JLR can go and expose whoever they want who's speaking the truth against them. He's doing exactly what he did that got him in prison. By what he was doing in a crime ring, by buying and selling identities, Criminals buy those identities. They then go and commit their criminal acts with those identities. That is then what they go and they do and they use those identities when they are buying drugs, buying guns, committing crimes, getting arrested. Then innocent people have their entire life savings stolen. Everything they've ever worked for, everything they've ever dreamed of is gone. It's not a victimless crime. Is it a victimless crime when maybe a young mother has everything stolen from her and she just had another baby and maybe the stress of raising the kids and having no money and no access to be able to get the bank accounts and nobody understanding the stress of having your identity stolen and what if if that stress drove that young mother to take her own life? What if she wouldn't have been rescued in time? How many people weren't rescued in time from the stress of identity theft? How many people went to jail or behind bars for other people using their name for crimes they did not commit? This is what he did. This is what he did. And his own parents got probation for not telling on their wayward child. It's just a fraction of what he did, but it's what he continues to do. The problem is he didn't learn. He didn't stop. I have no problem with somebody who had a bad past and who went and learned and did better. I have a problem with people who are outwardly committing crimes and laughing about the fact that they have a criminal past that is showing that they're just better, smoother criminals right now. If you have a past and you went and you have served your time and made yourself better, I have no problem with that. So what? That's amazing. Most of us could feasibly be put in jail for things that we've done. Only certain people get caught. JLR got caught, but it didn't stop him. Watch this masterpiece that Deets on the Streets did, it goes on to show you won't even believe, you won't even believe the things he's done. If you go over to the 40, you'll go through and see what he did to the victims of Sandy Hook. You'll see, I I can't even, go over to the 40 minute mark, trust me. We're going to go here. Prolific in social media, creating multiple Facebook accounts, YouTube accounts, Twitter accounts to troll people with, even to troll himself at times. Very odd behavior, a behavior that I believe he continues to this day. But he also starts to go, quote unquote, real life. Although his past crimes affected real people, they truly did. What he begins to do, though, is actively attack people on social media and cases, of course. It's very evident that he is drawn to whatever the hot topic is of the time. He attended the Bill Cosby trial in September and offered Cosby jello every time the rapist entered and exited the court. This is also when Jonathan takes the opportunity to jump into the political world and troll the shit out of it. One particularly successful ruse was posing as a Muslim and attending political events. He did it at a Trump event in Pennsylvania on October 1st. 
2016. And then just three days later, he was front row at a Hillary Clinton town hall in Haverford, Pennsylvania, representing Muslims for Clinton. That appearance led to Riches being featured in the lead image of a Breitbart story, attacking the council on Islamic American relations, a Muslim civil rights and advocacy group that the political right has used as a boogeyman to whip up Islamophobia. While all of Jonathan's political trolling is downright narcissistic, shameless, and disgusting, this situation at the end of 2016 sheds a lot of light into who Jonathan Lee Riches truly is. After Trump won the election, Jonathan took to trolling anti-Trump protests, rallies that were happening around the country. He also started doxing anyone that would post that they were having an anti-Trump rally. When he posted Nicole's photo, the comments under it were so horrendous. He also outed her previous employer thinking it was- And there we go. And just, it go, I mean, this is a masterpiece. Really, really watch and share this video. Dietz did an amazing job. I, I am so impressed with her work. Now, the problem is, is that he continues this behavior. He goes to these um, rallies with, with Betty and they do their, their little games, as we've talked about, and They raise their money to go to these rallies, which is all that they want, by acting like they're doing it for the children, for the children. No, they're not helping the children. They're tricking people into giving them money for the children so that their goal is to go and cause chaos at presidential rallies. Why? I don't know. But that's their job, small town girl says. So they live off of other people giving them money that they're saying they're going to go to go and find summer, but they're actually going to political rallies and causing problems and making thousands of online profiles. So that it looks like their channels have people supporting them. So when other people go by, they think, well, if anything was wrong with them, they wouldn't have this many supporters. They wouldn't have this many subs. Well, the most of them are fake profiles created by JLR. Okay. So. Don't believe me that he hasn't stopped exactly what he's doing? Well, let's check this out. Once again, my channel is just a wealth of information. Um, let's see here. We're going to go over here to my community page. And we're going to go down here. Down. Aha. Okay. So I wrote four days ago. I said, Jonathan Lee Richards... Hashtag JLR, JLR investigates, modern day where is Waldo, shows how accurate Google is these days. LOL. Google, where is Jonathan Lee Richards? Riches. And if you want a good laugh, read his Wikipedia, Wikipedia page. Sadly, people think he's a credible reference for their news coverage. Just one of those things, I guess. Some people don't check the reputation of their sources. So put that in here because this is a, an example of, of our actual media and how inaccurate it is because it says right now currently it says currently plaintiff jonathan lee riches is a convicted federal prisoner currently incarcerated at the federal medical center in lexington kentucky which is located in the eastern district of kentucky and this is current you can look it up and it says he's in there right so you have to ask yourself why did he have to be hosted in a medical prison as opposed to a regular one well could it be because of his alleged mental illness as you heard in my video small town girl thinks it's funny and cute 
And I understand that people just coming on can see and think, oh, he's harmless. He didn't hurt anybody. He's just, you know, it's just, you know, white collar crime. You know, it just hurts the rich people. No, it doesn't. And he continues his pattern of behavior. And he's living off the grid by money that he is extorting from other people. For the children. For the children. Right? For the children. So I posted that. And I get this comment in here. Let's see. I get this one here. JLR is great at what he does. Everyone has a pasted, pasted. JLR continues to stay on the right path. People should leave him the hell alone. Okay. All right. All right. Got three thumbs up. I mean, you know, they're probably all him. This is probably him. So we're going to go over here to the replies and we're going to go here. And I said, he just banged the door of a hotel with Summer's parents in it. Pretty sure that's a violation of his probation. And I said, and what exactly is pasted? And uh, she said, it's called text to talk, lol. He's came far from his old past. Mm. Yeah. Uh, text to talk isn't going to say, everybody has the pasted, okay? I'm just saying, okay? And so then, then this person or JLR wants to uh, further defend the indefensible and say, Don and Candace tell a lot of people they'll, make, they'll meet up, then they ghost them. It's period. A huge game they immaturely play, period. It's not JLR fault. I said, he did the cop knock and spooked them. Definitely not within his parole conditions. Okay? And then I I pasted the, the YouTube to back back up what I'm saying. Because that's the thing. I know 100%. I tell you all about 8% because I can't tell you the other 92%. But when I say something, I actually know what the fuck I'm talking about. But these people want to sit there and, and try to educate me. Just like small town girl wanted to try and educate heels in the air of all people about how she should she should watch what, what JLR does and, and what all that he did for the Idaho. And when heels in the air is like, oh, well, what did he do? Well, you know what? You just have to go and watch his videos. You know, do you have an email? I can send you some of his videos. Like, oh my God. My God. People don't think. Do they do they think with Okay, so I pasted, pasted with the pasted, pasted, okay, put this down here because this little clip shows that JLR... Leanna Lynn exactly relies on here. Spectrum Business to keep her shop connected with fast, reliable internet, the Spectrum Business Connect phone system and mobile service. I cannot live without it. <laughs> That's Spectrum Business. No nonsense, just business. Okay, so... I am proving right now that JLR is continuing the exact behavior and stalking behavior that has got him in prison, which is currently a violation of his parole. This behavior that he is doing is what he went to prison for and what he is on pro parole for. So don't come at me and says it's in his, it's in his past. He's doing the same thing. He's selling IDs. He's committing identity theft by doing so. He is selling IDs to Molly, Betty, and anybody else who will give him the $125 fee that they're well known for paying. I hope that his probation officer sees what he's doing. Thank you, White Boy Radio, for this clip that you took. And this is what was posted on JLR's channel. I don't want to take anything from his because I don't want to deal with the headache right now. So I took this from White Boy Radio Lockdown's channel. And you're going to see what JLR is allowed to post on his channel and doesn't get in trouble for. But if we were to try and do something like that, we would be in trouble because it's against the terms of service to do what he's doing. But we're not on probation. 
So he's breaking the terms of service for YouTube, the platform that he's right now performing his scams on, while breaking the terms of his parole. So let's watch him do this. And remember, this person who's defending him is telling me that, oh, it's, it, it's not JLR's fault. People say they're going to meet with them and then they don't show up. It's, it's not his fault. JLR's just a victim. Isn't he cute? Yeah, well, if he's so cute, why don't one of you guys give him a house so he doesn't have to sit there and mooch, mooch hotel money and meal money and, and airfare money and everything to go out and do his stupid stocking shit? Or what is it he calls it? Gorilla reporting? You know, and so he does this, so then it's monkey see, monkey do. You know, what he's doing is being like a horrible, a horrible paparazzi. The kind of paparazzi that got Princess Diana killed. That's what he's doing. This is the behavior. Running out after cars like a rabid dog to go and ask people what they saw so that then maybe they can't be witnesses in a court. That's, that's interfering in an active investigation. This isn't funny. These are criminal acts. He has problematic behavior that should not be supported nor, nor rewarded as thinking it's just cute and harmless. Once again, let's see how he's the victim here. Here we go. Play the, I'll play I'll play their silly games when they come at me. He is posting their license plate, okay? That's an identifier. As you saw, I had to take, or my video was taken down by YouTube because on a document showing JLR's cohort or ex-compadre, ex-girlfriend, affiliate member of the hooves on the ground group if I did this I would be in violation of the terms of service on my channel he does this he did this he zooms in on the license plate so he has went and clearly stalked them Found their car, zooms in on the license plate. Let's watch them do the cop knock. Wants to make sure it's real clear there. And here he goes. He's gonna make his approach. He's real good at the cop knock. He's used to hearing it. Hey, where's Summer? Candace, where's Summer? Does that look like JLR was set up? Does that look like he's the victim? And that's what people are paying him to do, okay? That's what people are paying JLR to do because they think that, that that's funny. And, and yeah, it's funny to go and clown the wells. Their daughter is missing. Their daughter is missing. They don't have any idea where their daughter is. I don't know if they are innocent or guilty. I know enough about the case to know that it's sad that, yes, they have a past, so does JLR. But you know what? Don and Candace were out there earning their money, putting up sighting. And people paid JLR, Molly, and Betty to go and harass Don and Candace at the job site so they would get fired. 
What does that do? That goes and puts Candace and Don on welfare. So then the tax dollars have to pay for them. They cannot earn money because JLR and Betty and Molly determined that people who earn money by hard work in the sun, using their bodies, performing very difficult manual labor, should not be able to earn money because their daughter's missing. Well, but you know what? They, 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 they did it. They did it. You know what? They, we have a system in our country. It's called the criminal justice system. Okay. And if Betty and JLR were held to the same type of vigilante justice that they are out there committing and having people pay them to do for the children, do you think that either of them would be out and free today for the crimes that they've committed? You have no idea how long and extensive both of their criminal histories are. And those are only the crimes that are proven and that they have been convicted of. So think about all the other ones that we see. So don't tell me that JLR has changed and it's in his pasted, okay? He's doing exactly what he's doing, and he's going and finding other people's identities, doxing them, and being paid for them. That is exactly what got him in prison in the first place. Any person who has went in prison and is out there showing that they have changed would resent a person like JLR because he is not being a good steward of showing how you change the behavior. He is doing the very same behavior that got him behind bars. And because he was too much of a chicken shit to be in general pop, he played that he was sick to go into a medical facility and all of the other little games that he played in prison. How much of our tax dollars had to go and take care of little baby JLR behind bars in his little cage where he belongs? Hmm? You ever think about it? Whenever you're working and, and you see all those taxes taken out, those taxes are, are, are going and supporting JLR. Well, like I say, it's our part, our duty to share the word because people pl clearly are not getting the word about what these tragedy pimps are doing and how dangerous it is. And if we don't hold them accountable, nobody is going to. And I would say not to back down. If you see the truth, expose the truth for what it is. And when you hear people just thinking that, oh, he's harmless. It's a, it's a, a victimless crime and whatnot. Think about it. Think about it may just seem like, well, what's the harm in subscribing? What's the harm in watching? Well, it makes other people think they're credible, number one. And then if you come over here to my playlists, let's see here. I'm going to show you. I have done content on Maddie Kingsbury. I have done content on... The Montana Four. I have them all in playlists. Business has. I've not asked for anybody to give me motel money, airfare, or otherwise. Montana massacre happened very close to where I grew up. I know more than I say. Because I have friends who have their kids there. And I know things that I won't say. Because I have morals. So I'm not making the money that they are. And I get forgotten about. But what I'm saying is, 
I have everything there that is allowed to be. Every document out there for the Koberger, the Koberger hearings, everything, this, this, all of the search warrants are sealed. The ones that aren't, I, I have every document here and I've done that without asking anybody for money for that. Um, there's no reason Hi to be everyone. giving these people How money. are you? Let me see. All of the documents there. are here. Okay. So when you see, well, but JLR has this and he has that. He's making up disgusting, horrible, irresponsible rumors that will absolutely taint a future jury. We want justice for the victims of any crime, but especially for the Idaho Four. The things he's allowing and feeding in his chat are because he has so many thousands of profiles. He posts disgusting stuff, and he talks to himself about the disgusting stuff, and then he said does the other disgusting stuff. So he has you in there believing that people were beheaded, their kidneys were taken out, their innards were hanging by lights, etc., etc. It's disgusting. And people think, oh, yeah, because he's finding that out. Because he's down there and he's he's doing the he's doing the stuff. No, he's not. He's talking to himself. Then you're believing it. He's putting on quite a show. Please don't believe it. It's not true. What is true is in the legal documents, and I have them all here, as do other creators. Okay? We've done everything that's out there. What they're saying is just for clickbait, just for the money, just for the money, just for the money that only idiots would actually give money to support. I've done all the Kingsbury. All of that's there. It's all here. People like me are doing what we are supposed to be doing within the terms of service. Please don't forget about us. We're doing what we are supposed to do. Please do not allow those that continue to break the rules, continue to leave those of us who are trying to grow our channel responsibly by creating a variety of content and go with truth and honesty because people like JLR and Betty should not be rewarded for their continual shit shows. Please check out Deets. Amazing work. Please check out Heels. Um, who else has done really good? Uh, burnt Toast. Burnt Toast has done great work on JLR. I love Burnt Toast. Please support Burnt Toast with all that you can. Um, the Glarer does great work with about JLR. And it's really cool when Burnt Toast and the Glarer do JLR. There you go. There you are. He's done all kinds of stuff. <laughs> I mean, and sure, you're like, oh, that's funny. How, how could he? He's just funny and he's entertaining. Okay. Well, then maybe make him your, your pet. But otherwise, know that he's left a lot of devastation in his path. And every time that you're on the computer and you have to go through this extra check and you have to go through this extra check, it's because of what he did and he created what we all know now as fishing. It wasn't around before he was around. Okay? So... Oh, man, where'd that thumbnail go? It was pretty good. It was pretty good. Let's see. Hello. That's the glare. He's, he's a really good comment. Do awful things. So. 
rehabilitate because that's the purpose of jail and prison. The purpose of jail and prison is to rehabilitate. So maybe he's taking advantage of the fact that he's in a position to rehabilitate. And maybe he asked to be in segregation because yes, in jail, you could still get drugs. In jail, you could still get booze. Yeah, oh, that's the worst. That's the worst. Voices behind my balls. Same thing with her. <laughs> Same thing with her. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And the only reason Laura is bitter and, and is mad at MGL and all these other people is because she's in an island on her own where nobody fucking likes her. Everybody sees right through her and what her fucking intentions are because of everything that she's done. Everybody sees right through her. And now she's got no home to go to. And she's only mad at MGL. She's only mad at her because she feels like she did all of the interviewing saying, hey, I'm on your side, Don. I'm on your side while she was on MGL's panel. MGL didn't do any of the work, but it was MGL's panel. And MGL got all the credit for that. And she wouldn't share Don's contact information with Laura. So Laura couldn't milk Don for content. That's all that is. That's all that is, people. I mean, so that, that, that's all you get is these, these bottom feeder asshole content creators. And now this guy's in jail in segregation and like i said it's probably for his protection because of the narrative that has been spun by these shitty creators that i have been begging people to not do since this case broke i've been begging everybody just do what sheriff lawson is asking us to do just do what the tbi is asking us to do we can use this information we could use our platforms to spread information productive information about a missing child but when it comes to the personal shit with this family, try to stay away from that. We don't need rumors getting spun around. We don't need misinformation getting spun around. But people don't give a shit because it puts money in their pockets at that moment. And it's just dumb greed when you think about it. When you think about yes. it, it's just plain dumb greed. 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 Because, yeah, they're, they're getting something right then and there. Yeah. But in the grand scheme of things, by creating a reputation where you actually give good information, your channel will grow. And you'll have a quality audience, a quality audience that doesn't that doesn't mind supporting insight. And and that is the truth. And I really like the glare. Um check him out. I, 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 gosh, I think, and there's so many more that have done really, really important work exposing this and showing why you do not support shit like this. Okay. So when it seemed like the small town girl was just, you know, being cute. No. Oh, I love you. Really? Well, you know what? He does that. No, I wouldn't do that. You know, yeah, and he has no morals. And he has it. Well, you know what? Yeah, if, I would I would hire him if, if my daughter was missing. Yeah, yeah, I would do that. Well, you want to know why you wouldn't hire him? Because he'd fuck up the chances of anybody ever being prosecuted for stealing your daughter. That's what he does. And that's what he has taught his monkeys to do or Oh, it's gorilla reporting that he's taught them to do. Monkeys, gorillas, all the same thing. Monkey see, monkey do. They repeat the behavior of the other. And their behavior is as contagious as herpes. And so now they are a bunch of herpes-ridden monkeys going around breaking the law by getting money from people who are vulnerable enough to think that they're the ones who are going to find a child. And they're doing it for the children. They've done nothing for any child. They have done everything for themselves. Stop feeding the greed. JLR taught Betty 
so many tricks that come over here. Let me go back to my uh, playlists. And let's see here. My videos, my playlists. Let's go over here. We're going to go over to here to Madeline Kingsbury. Okay. And I've got a playlist here. So everything that is allowed to be legally shared and that is responsible and provable is all here because this happened very near to where I live in Minnesota. Okay. So when small town girl was there saying, well, you know what? No one gets out there and searches and I just want to be a part and I want to commit, create a community that goes and searches and then we can find these kids. Okay. Those things happen. And when you are in a community where something happens and a person whether an adult, a child, a vulnerable adult goes missing, there are searches and they are conducted by the police and they help make sure that everybody who knows and helps with the searches is aware of what to do, where to search, what to do if they are the one that finds something. And I want everybody to stop acting like this is some kind of freaking game of Pokemon Go. That, it, oh, oh, yeah, I want to go body hunting. It's not Pokemon Go. It's not geocaching. It's a tragedy. And believe me, you don't want to be the one, the first one who finds the body. Because it's not fun. It's not a game. Okay? There are very specific ways in which searches are conducted, and those searches are conducted. They were being conducted for Madeline Kingsbury. Don't know who she is? Well, come listen to my channel. You'll find out. And uh, when the Davises booked their Verbo vacation home, they. What happened? Because JLR was showing showing um, Betty how to do these things. And, and, so, and so Betty raised all the money, just like JLR taught her to say, for the children, for the children, for the children. Oh, for, for Maddie. Maddie Maddie is missing. And, and, you know, no one's out there searching. You know, and I, you know we want to go and search for Maddie. We want to go search for Maddie. We want to go search for Maddie. We're going to go search for Maddie. We're going to go to the rally. We're going to go to the rally. We're going to go to the rallies. 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 We're going to go search for Maddie. Okay. So they told um that they were gonna go and 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 go to Idaho, but then they accidentally went to to the to the rally and then they went to the Idaho and then they went to the rally and then they went to Minnesota and they did this and everything and then they went to another rally in Iowa, but it was canceled, but then they went to a rally, but they went through a rally all for the children, right? Right. So Betty comes into town because she's gonna conduct her search. Okay. She doesn't respect the fact that there have been extensive and organized searches daily when it was safe for the weather, targeted searches being very well organized as to which properties have been searched, giving a dragnet basically of where they know that the boyfriend who is now arrested on suspicion of her murder Adam Fravel is behind bars where he belongs. All of us are ready, we're ready, willing to go at any time. And they they tell you, they they give you instructions each day. They say, okay, we have this many searchers. We don't need any more. And then, you know, like if you're me or whoever else, you want to be a part of it, you say, hey, you know, and you, and you say, hey, I'm available, you know, Wednesday, whatever, I'm available this, blah, 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 blah. And then you get a notification. If they don't have enough people, then sure, you can help, okay? That's that's what happens when you're in the community. You don't need to be going and getting YouTube dollars from people who are sitting out there who don't have money as it is, but, oh, they're giving money to go and find somebody. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll give you money. 
Nobody asks for any money to actually go and find somebody in their community. Do you know that for most of these searches, it's amazing because people will drop everything and they will go and they will go running and no one would dream of asking for a damn cent. That's how people behave in a community when somebody goes missing. It isn't about going and getting money for going to a rally or two on the way and then stopping in and, and making everybody think that you just did this for the children or for Maddie. Because when Be- when Betty came in, she came in because so many searches had already been done, but the one had been canceled for the weather. So there was going to be this big Mother's Day search. It was going to be the search that we'd all been waiting for, for the weather to clear. And all of a sudden, Betty comes fresh from the one rally in between the other rally, goes and puts her chairs there and goes and starts harassing the neighbors, the neighbors that live across the street, next door, et cetera, et cetera. Bang, bang, bang. I'm a reporter. Yeah, I'm, I'm covering this on the, on, you know, for Maddie. Can you tell me what you saw? Can you tell me, can you tell me what you saw? Can you tell me um, what the behavior that you saw? Can you tell me what you saw? You know what happened? The entire Mother's Day search was called off because the tragedy pimps came into town and they didn't want that search exploited. So that search was stopped. So that weekend where everybody had planned and 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 put aside other things and came with their horses and and organized ways to get other people's horses, et cetera, et cetera. And all of these people who were going to put their actual Mother's Day plans on hold and come and help search for Maddie. It was canceled because the behavior that JLR does spreads like herpes and it shows other people how to make a living scamming based on the behavior that JLR does. So Betty's copying it. So she did it and she caused that to be shut down. And she interfered with an active investigation. So what do you think is going to happen now? Our... Adam Fravel and Madeline Kingsbury, may she rest in peace, neighbors, now going to be able to testify in front of a jury as to what they saw that day when he left or not because Betty went and pretended to be a reporter and tainted the information. And she's dangling that she took somebody to McDonald's to get the interview that she recorded that she was well, off the record that she just might re- release. She caused the search to get co- closed down. Maddie wasn't found that weekend. She was found, what, two weeks later? What if she would have been found Mother's Day weekend? What if that would have been the time? But because Betty wanted to do that, and and because Betty apparently knows how to search better than anybody, right? So all of these searches that we have all been aware of in which areas are covered, in which areas are crossed off, in which property owners are saying this has been searched, in which horse team has covered this land that couldn't be accessed by pedestrians, this area that was underwater before, this area that was covered by snow before, et cetera, et cetera. That is all being done for People who volunteer, who would never ask for money. And then you know what happens on top of that is that there are organizations such as Texas Equisite Search who comes in and they would never ask the family or, or people or anybody for money. They have their own way because they are actually bona fide nonprofit organizations. They have their own way of raising funds and they can speak to the funds that are given to them and how those funds are used. That is how you help. You don't fund criminal behavior. You're funding criminal behavior by funding the actions of tragedy pimps such as Blowjob Betty and JLR, the Jerry Springer of YouTube. So when I hear some chick sitting there, I love him. I yeah, yeah, I love what he did. I would hire him. I would want him. Because you know, we just need to get along. We all just need to get along. And what he does, well, yeah, he, well, he didn't hurt anybody. I mean, it was just, and you know, well, yeah, it, but he, he, I know that he was in jail for a while. Yeah. And I know that that's in his past and people tell me, oh, people set JLR up and he's just a victim. Do you know that he had the world 
or whatever it is in his little world, convinced that when we had to shoot down that plane that uh, something happened with the pilot a few weeks ago. Do you know that in his chat with his 20,000 or so profiles back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, do you know that he had all of those profiles and the people who just pop in going back and forth with their tinfoil hats? Do you know that he had them all convinced that we just nearly escaped another 911? Another 911? That our government, you know, wants to get that out of wraps. But yeah, we just, we just, uh, we just barely, barely, barely missed uh, having another 9-11 incident. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's the kind of shit he's doing. Why fund that? Tell your grannies. Tell your loved ones. Tell your neighbors. Tell your sisters, your brothers. The butcher, the baker, the candlestick, well, the candle maker, that's a whole other story I'm not going to get into. Tell them not to fund criminal behavior, that there are actual organizations that take donations. Do not give to any of these people who are saying that they are raising money to give to an organization such as St. Jude. Ooh. Do your work, people create a better community. Do not support those that are operating with greed. I would be so happy if YouTube went back to not allowing any begging. I think every single creator should be able to say, hey, this is where um, my link is to my cash app. By the way, Tabitha Jane 13, I'm not above it. I'm broke ass hoe. Y'all know that. Tabitha Jane 13 is my cash app. Should you feel the urge? Just saying. But that's the way it should be, is that every creator has it listed. You're, you should be allowed to say, how you know, how you accept tips, you know, PayPal, Venmo, cash app. It should be there. It should just be like, okay, that's how you do. And it should be listed. And, and that's that. And it shouldn't be that it's ever mentioned or anything else. And if you do mention it and you're sitting there begging, 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 then you're off the freaking panel. Because the greed has ruined this community. I am trying so hard to continue to follow the rules, but it's it's really tough when you see the other people profiting from doing nothing, nothing close to what the rules are. So if you want to find out the truth and the actual documents that are are allowed and not anything that is not true, with some good commentary in there too make the story, check out my channel. And like I say, people who are new and don't know who is who in this zoo, make sure that they know that there are creators who act responsibly and there are creators who are snakes you got to watch out. I watched for about, gosh, oh, I'm going to say I watched and watched and watched. I'm going to say a solid six months before I really started making content so I could understand better who is who in the zoo, who I want to model myself after, um, what problematic behavior is, what you want to avoid. Um, how to not get in trouble. Um, but other people don't. They just, you know, log on, see something that looks like they're entertaining. And, you know, so it's, you know, it's understandable how you could see somebody like small town girl saying that. But then you find out that, you know, she's been trying to find summer wells and in that community. And you just, you just shake your head. You just shake your freaking head. And if you get bored, check out some of the concerts I get to go to. I I think this guy is so freaking hot. I'm just saying. Um, I had never heard of KOism. They're a Swedish new metal group. Um, and then this is Tarja. She's a Finnish rock star, heavy metal goddess, straight out of Finland. Um, that's my cat. She loves eating strawberries. I have three cats. So check them out. Um, like I say, pretty much anything you'd ever want to know about anything is, is on my channel. I, I'm starting. I, I'm doing all right. I have a really good community here. 
I have the best community. I don't like calling them subscribers because I feel like we're all friends and, and it's important to me. So although I only have 1.79, let's see here. I've been doing my channel for um, one year as of last month. So almost 13 months. I got monetized three months ago and I got my first check last week of $121. So $121 for one year's work, not bad. Um, but uh, I continue to grow with a good, consistent and steady growth. I've never bought any subs. Um, you can, I, I can pretty much tell how I know each and everybody um, and the conversations we've had, etc. So I like that kind of a community and I don't see the tragedy pimps doing that. So let's, let's keep cleaning up these YouTube streets one by one and working together and please sub up and check out the other channels I suggested. And thanks for listening as always. Thank you. Bye-bye.